They're still being good girls, Mrs. W. Oh, lovely. How many have we got there? Four. Four? Ooh. Four. Someone laid an extra one. <laughs> I don't think I collected them yesterday, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 24th of February today. And that means that we're less than a month away from the spring equinox. 25 days to be precise. Today, we started off at minus one. Now, it's probably only about eight degrees, but with the sunshine, it is absolutely heavenly. Isn't it, Poppy? Because it's a Poppy day, isn't it? <laughs> hey? <laughs> She's happy to come out today, <laughs> nice and warm. <laughs> but there is such thing, or a saying certainly here around Norfolk, as a full spring. And of course it is. We will still get cold days. We could even get snow in March. We've seen that before now. But what I would say is you want to enjoy each and every day that's like this. Feel the sun on your face. Listen to the bird song. It's great to be alive and in today's video we need to do our last sowings of February. going to be too much longer before these seedlings will go outside. The onions round about mid-March. The same with the brassicas that we sowed earlier on this month. And you can see that a week later the peas are bursting their way through. So it was a really good thing to do to save our own pea seed. And myself and Mrs. W won't have the stress this year <laughs> of thinking, we need to film this. Where are our peas? <laughs> no, they're all looking good, aren't they? They are. And we've moved them into the glass house, the greenhouse, because, well, they're taking up a lot of room in the poly. And we have other things to sow now, and there will be more, even more things to sow during the month of March. And that's we find is the best place for us to film so that we have room to film in here. We actually find it better to film in here. There's much more space uh, than there is in the greenhouse. The polytunnel square footage wide is much bigger. Our tunnel is 19 feet by 13, isn't it? Yep. So. Usually for us here in our Norfolk Nudig garden, we will look to sow our tomatoes and celeriac somewhere between the last week in February and the first week in March. We've chosen this weekend, and this is the last weekend in February, by next Friday it will be the 1st of March. Because we have other jobs that are going on next weekend. I've ordered a nice lot of wood chip and we want to be able to get cardboard down around the side of the polytunnel and then get wood chip over the top of that just to finish it off all around the polytunnel and it looks nice at the top here. And one of the reasons is, is that this is what our soil is really like. And you've seen how good our vegetable beds look. This is what it would look like here and now if we wanted to be planting into things. It's really claggy, isn't it? Sticks to your feet. Yeah. <laughs> Sticks to your shoes. <laughs> and this is our service area where all our compost is. So the last thing we want to be doing is to be padding around here in all this clay mud. So that will make life much easier for us in and around the service areas. The shed is that side and as you saw the compost bays are that side. 
But the first thing I need to do is to sew some toms. We have one or two that we're going to sew. I've already charged the pots with compost. The first one we're going to sew is San Mazzano. And just cover those with some vermiculite. San Mazzano. Now, of course, as we are still in February, everything in the month of February has been sewn in this Melcourt Silver Grow. Now, the Melcourt Silver Grow appears to be much more moist than the fertile fibre compost that we used in the seedlings for January. It really is really quite, quite moist. So these probably won't want as much of a watering as when we use the fertile fibre. That would be my advice if you're using this compost. So with that in mind, I am going to stand them in some water, but we won't leave them there probably for the full 30 minutes or so that we would normally do with other composts. Because what we don't want things to do is to get so wet that the seeds actually rot. Now the next variety is one of Mrs W's favourites mm -hmm. and that's our old favourite Moneymaker. It was my dad's favourite as well, <laughs> that's why I think it's mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next one I would say is probably Mrs W's absolute favourites. <laughs> they are a vine, cherry type vine tomato. It's simply called red cherry. We found this what, three, four years ago? Yeah, probably. And so maybe even more than that, but yeah. We've grown it ever since, haven't we? Have. we? You yeah, just I absolutely really... adore them, yeah. don't you? So we'll get those Very sewn tasty. there. It's really warm in here today, isn't it? As the sun is out, it's amazing. It is now, the sun is out, yeah. <laughs> really is. And that's your red cherry, Mrs W. Lovely. And then lastly, Ken, the rumour. Italian plum tomato. We really are looking forward to seeing what that particular variety of tomato was like. Yes. Yeah. It really is great in the comments, you know, if you grow something that you think is really good, we'll always go on your recommendations and give them a try. We can't try everything every season, but ourselves, we actually do like to try something, a different variety or something new every season where we can. Yeah. So if you have your particular favourite varieties of whatever vegetable it is, always let us know in the comments, because we do read each other and every one of them. And we'll always select something from there, usually, that we'll try and grow. This year, it's Ken over there in Wales. He was telling us about how great the room tomato was for him last year. So we're going to give it a try alongside our San Mazzano. The same style of tomato. And they're really good for making tomato sauces, aren't they? Yeah, pasta sauces. Pasta sauces. Yeah. Okay. They don't tend to have so many seeds as no. the other tomatoes, do they? That's right. The next thing we want to sow is our celeriac. And it's a variety called Giant Prague. It's another new variety for us. Um, over the last few years, we've always sown Monarch. We sowed a different variety last year, didn't we? Yeah, it was Prins, I think. Yeah, Prins. Yeah. And we weren't so impressed with that. No. Nope. Uh, they didn't make huge bulbs. So we're going to try the Giant Prague this year. Uh, 
Now these are best sewn into either a pot or into a seed tray because these are really, <laughs> really small. They are, aren't they? So we're just going to sprinkle those over the surface. You get many more seeds than you actually need. And I've actually only given them a really light covering of vermiculite. You can see that the pak choy that we sewed back in, it was the beginning of February, wasn't it? One of the first things we sewed of the yes. month. They're now in the ground and happily growing away. So now it's time to be starting the next ones off so that we get some continuity. We tend to only want to have about 10 plants at a time. They are prone to bolting and going to seed. So we want to reap them before that happens. So if you had 20 or 30 in here, you could lose over half your crop. By the time you start on you know, the other half, they will already be running to seed. So we'll just make some divots in here. As usual with the brassicas, we are aiming for two seeds per cell. And then we shall thin to the strongest. Really doesn't matter if you get more than two in there. You'll just thin them anyway until, until you get down to one. So you don't beat yourself up if you only actually get one in there or four in there. And as usual, give them a covering of vermiculite. That is our February sowing complete. Of course, there'll be much more to sow in March. And if your weather conditions are not ready for you to sow these plants yet, then just delay. Delay until March. What I would say is for things like celeriac, I wouldn't leave them much beyond the second part of March. They take a long time to grow. And to get to the size where you can put them out into your garden in May. So they're better off sown the earlier part of March than the latter part of March. They're probably going to take two weeks or more to actually pop their heads through. They can be very problematic and germinating. The other thing is, is that aside from the pak choy, which will remain here, the tomatoes and the celeriac, they will go down to the house and they will actually go on to our heat mat. And it'll be the last time that we use the heat mat. Once they've germinated, switched off, back into the shed for another year. Because everything else that we will want to sow for the rest of this year will be fine here and germinating. Now, I do hope you're finding this series of videos useful. And that, you know, they're triggering a reminder to you that these things can either be sown now or certainly very soon within the next couple of weeks or so. Do let us know in the comments if you are finding this useful. Do let us know what you have sown during the month of February. Have you sown the same things as us? Have you sown different things? We're always, always so glad to get all your comments. Do have a great gardening week and we, we shall see you on the next one.